Hi everyone, this is Manas, your friend and tutor and guys in today's session we are going to get into the depth and details of friction. What exactly friction is, why does it always oppose motion, what are the different types of friction, static, kinetic and also limiting friction. We will also get to know the four laws of friction and how coefficient of friction comes into the picture, what is angle of friction, what is angle of repose and we will also try to solve some numericals and examples by learning all the concepts. First of all, let's kick off by understanding the idea of what exactly friction is and how does this force of friction come into the picture. Let's let's try to understand that, and for that, uh, let me let me let me make a figure. Okay, this is basically understanding what friction is all about. So let's say we are having a surface over here. Let's say this is ground, and let's have an object over here something like this it's it's basically a rectangular block having a certain amount of mass okay now if you, if you watch carefully if you watch carefully if you apply some force let's say this is the applied force p p a p p that is the applied force obviously obviously this block isn't going isn't going to move instantly rather there is going to be a force of opposition over here why and this is what is known as basically known as the friction force this is a common occurrence. Once again, whenever you try to apply some force, a very small force, let's say, the block is not going to move at that instant. Rather, if you keep on increasing the force, then after a certain point in time, the block will, will break loose and it will start moving in the forward direction. So that clearly means that for a certain amount of time, for a certain span of time, there is a certain amount of force acting which opposes this applied force and basically this is what is known as the friction force. Let me just write this as it opposes motion. What is friction? Friction is the force which opposes motion or to be very precise, uh, what do you call it? Precise. This is what you call a relative motion. Okay. Now, if someone would ask, sir, what happens between the surfaces in contact? What actually happens between two surfaces when they slide over each other? What happens between two surfaces when they rub over each other? Let's zoom into this. Let's zoom just into this portion and let us try to work out what actually happens over here. Let us try to zoom and let's see. So, there is a surface. We've zoomed in. Okay. So, this one is the block, upper block. So the surface is actually not always smooth, rather the surface is something like this. So we have zoomed into this point and what we found is that the surface is slightly, slightly, what you call disturbed, okay, or the surface is inconsistent. The surface is inconsistent, right? Now, what about this surface, this ground? Even ground is inconsistent and when these two inconsistent surfaces slide over each other, when these two inconsistent surfaces slide over each other, it leads to what? It leads to a force that is known as a friction force. So when this block tries to move in this direction, the ground, this ground over here applies a force of friction towards the left and when uh, obviously the ground is not going to move in this direction, but let's say there is a surface over here. And there is a surface over here. If this surface tries to move in this direction, this surface applies a friction force in this direction. And obviously, if this surface is going to move in this direction, then there is going to be a friction force towards the right hand side. Okay. Um, by this object onto this object. So that is the entire idea. Even if you try to make the free body of these two bodies, uh, you can do so by this. Let me just make it. This is the free body diagram of these two surfaces. So this block is trying to move forward. Obviously, it is going to experience a friction in this direction. This is the applied force P. This is the force of friction F. And as far as the free body diagram of this force is concerned, this block is concerned, it is going to be experiencing a force of friction in this direction. That's it. Okay. Now, so that was basically all about why this force is generated. Why? Because of the inconsistency of the surface in contact. So if somebody asks you, how the friction force is generated. Your answer should be because of the inconsistency of the surfaces which are trying to rub against each other, inconsistency of the 
surfaces which are trying to slide over one another so that is the entire idea of how a friction force is generated okay now we know what a friction force is it is always going to oppose the motion now another important thing a demonstration basically which is going to help you understand what sort of a friction is developed when a body is in a state of rest and what sort of a friction is developed when a body is in a state of motion or in a state of steady motion let's say okay to understand this phenomena okay i'm going to be giving you a demonstration so now we'll try to learn three different things static friction with the help of a demonstration obviously there are going to be <laughs> sensors and machines so let me just tell you two things we have over here what we have over here is let's say a machine okay which which has the ability to apply some force a machine which has the ability to apply some force so let me just call this as the force machine now so that's the force machine this machine can apply a force on a certain body let's say that the body is right here this is the force okay and this rather has to be called as the applied force which which i am going to be representing by capital p okay and there is a body over here there is this body now this body is on a surface and that surface let's say is ground itself the ground is inconsistent and because of the surface inconsistency there is obviously going to be some friction force generated okay that's always true and this over here let's say is an object right so there is this force p which has to be applied with the help of a force machine another thing that we have is a sensor now this ground is special let's say that this ground has a friction sensor friction sensor okay so this is all hypothetical i'm just trying to build it up using a simple story okay i'll try to explain this concept what happens let us try to make a plot between the applied force and the friction force how things are going to work out let's try to see that okay and where is my blue color here it is so first of all let us try to make a plot okay so this force machine let's say has a minimum value of force as 1 newton and let's say maximum value of force as 100 newton let us try to make a plot here we go this over here this x axis rather is the applied force applied force applied force applied force has been represented by capital p whereas this y axis over here is the force of friction force of friction let me write it here and let's say we are representing the force of friction by small f that would be appropriate okay so what are we going to do we are going to start the machine so machine starts and it immediately applies a force of let's say that the force applied by the machine is 1 newton what happens okay so what we observe is that the object stays where it is it does not move why does not it why it does not move the reason that the object does not move is that automatically as soon as you apply a force of p is equal to 1 newton there is automatically a force which sets itself up which adjusts in this direction opposite to that of the motion which automatically is equal to 1 newton that means as soon as you apply a force of 1 newton apply a force of 1 newton there is a force a 1 newton force in the right hand side direction there automatically a force is generated at the surface interface which is opposite to that of this applied force in this direction done both the forces are proportional remember so these two forces actually balance out each other and therefore the object cannot move so we've got a point we've got a point now what we do we keep on applying the force say from 1 newton to 2 newton then 3 newtons and all the time we see that in all the cases the object does not move object does not move okay 
that means the object tries to maintain its state of rest but this phenomena this state can happen up to a certain limit up to a certain range after which and once the value of applied force goes beyond that limit the object would break loose and it would automatically start moving and get itself into the state of steady motion and that is going to be your kinetic friction by the way the entire idea of having this demonstration is that force machine there is a friction sensor uh, if you keep on applying the uh, amount of uh, applied force the friction force also increases and that is being sensed by a friction sensor okay keep on applying the applied force the force of friction will also keep on increasing and we are going to have a plot something like this something like this something like this but there is a certain limit beyond which if you go then the object would break loose and it would start moving something like this let me just use this where is the cardboard where is my cardboard where is it gone i don't know anyway it's it's something like this so so you you've got a block over here it's in a state of equilibrium if you apply a force of 1 newton it does not move apply a force of 1 2 newton it still does not move because the forces are being balanced by the force of friction that means friction force is actually adjusting itself with respect to the applied force if you keep on increasing the applied force the friction force also increases right right that is so so you can also say that the friction force has a special property that it is adjustable it is a smart force but there is a maximum value of friction force which you which you must cross in order to make this body in order to make this object set into motion and that is known as the limiting friction let me just tell you this over here this over here is known as limiting friction limiting friction and by the way limiting friction and all the value and all the values of friction in this part let me just tell you this range is what is known as the static range or this is known as the static friction basically we are concerned with this y axis this is the static friction and the maximum value of static friction is your limiting friction which is written as f s for static and max f s max so the limiting friction is represented by f s max always remember static friction in general can be written as simply f s okay but what we are really concerned about and especially in the numericals also if you are supposed to calculate the value of friction you always need to calculate the maximum value of static friction and basically this is a course of statics and not dynamics so we are going to be concerned with only the maximum value of static friction and this is what is known as limiting friction this also by the way this also by the way is the state of impending motion state of impending motion where that is when the object is just about to start moving impending motion right so what happens once you go beyond this point now now the maximum value of friction has been reached so what happens once you go beyond that point the object would break loose and it is going to start moving isn't it once you go beyond this point the object will break loose and it will start moving so the what the sensor senses is this there is a dip there is a dip in the force of friction experienced by this sensor and this also this also will lead us to a certain conclusion i'll tell you that and the plot is again then constant so it's something like this so if you keep on increasing the amount of uh, applied force what you will see that the force of friction also increases but there is a maximum value of friction force once that is achieved and once you once the applied force goes beyond that point there is a dip after which the value of force of friction is going to be constant so this this over here will give you the four dynamic friction and, or the kinetic friction and this gives you the maximum value of static friction which by the way is what is referred to as the limiting friction and this is exactly what we are interested in especially in the problems of statics so this was the entire idea okay the entire post mortem of exactly what a friction forces and this is static friction and by the way this over here is referred to as 
kinetic friction in some of the books guys you will see this word dynamic friction also so both of them are absolutely fine you can use whichever term you want to static or dynamic friction and basically this is being represented by small f and k this is fs and fk fs stands for static friction and the fs max stands for limiting friction or the maximum value of static friction you can also say this is limiting friction is nothing but the maximum value of static friction okay maximum value of static friction how is that calculated well i'm going to be taking that up in laws of friction how the maximum value of static friction can be calculated so this was all about static friction limiting friction and kinetic or dynamic friction now now let me just give you very small very basic definitions for all of these different kinds of friction based upon the state of either rest or motion let's do that yeah. number 1 let's talk about static friction so when you talk about static friction let me just give you a very 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 basic definition the force of friction which comes into play between two surfaces between two bodies before one body slides over the other before one body starts moving over the other this is a very important definition let me just write this now guys just try to capture the essence of this definition what does it say the force of friction which comes into play between two bodies before one body this is a very important word before one body slides over the other that means what is static friction here at this point in time once you applied this force p the body will break loose and it will it is going to obviously set itself into motion before this before this what happens before this all these values all these values are going to give you the value of are going to give you the value of static friction so before the body slides before that point in time what happens the kind of friction that we have is obviously the static friction so always remember the force of friction which comes into play between two bodies when or rather before one body starts sliding over the other okay and this is the same way how we can actually define limiting friction now let us talk about limiting friction second limiting friction let me just read out the definition for all of you now this limiting friction definition says the force of friction which comes into play when a body just starts moving over the surface just starts moving <laughs> the definition here before and here it is just start or just starting to move right so let me just write this let us try to read this once again the force of friction which comes into play when one body just starts sliding just starts moving over another body let us try to highlight this this is a very important just starts moving okay so you need to remember these these terms when you talk about static friction before it starts moving when you talk about a limiting friction just here it is going to just start moving okay the motion shall commence and when you talk about this kinetic friction well it has already sets itself up into a state of steady motion now, let me just tell you that also kinetic friction okay let us just write the definition for kinetic friction and then we can move ahead number 3 kinetic friction so again the definition would be same the force of friction the force of friction which comes into play when let me just uh, talk about the most important line kinetic friction when 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 a body the force of friction which comes into play when a body is in a state of steady motion is in a state of steady motion what this let me just tell you once again the force of friction which comes into play when a body 
is in a state of steady motion that means it is sliding over another body and it has acquired a state of steady motion that means the it has acquired some velocity and maybe a uniform velocity let's say okay so remember these three things number one when you talk about static friction it is always going to happen before it starts moving when you talk about limiting friction it is the maximum value of static friction you can say this is one way of defining it the second way is that it is the friction experience when the object just just starts moving that is your limiting friction and then thirdly we have kinetic friction again the force of friction which comes into play when a body when a body has acquired or when the body has achieved a state of steady equilibrium very important again static friction before moving limiting friction just starts moving kinetic friction after it has moved if it has acquired a steady state of motion then in that case the friction experience would be a kinetic friction remember and one more thing which you can clearly see that fs max this is fx max is going to be greater than f k or you can also say you have one more relationship static friction okay is going to be less than fs max right and it can also be equal to this static friction can be less than is either less or is equal to fs max and when static friction equals fs max that point in time the static friction is transformed into a limiting friction so this is the entire idea of how all the three types of frictions can actually be assessed now let us take this session forward another important topic that i am going to be talking about is the laws of friction so there are going to be four laws that i am going to be talking about let's check them out one by one and what they actually convey okay very short very briefly i'm going to be explaining to you all of them number 1 so the first law is it depends upon the quality of surface what that essentially means to say is whether the surface is polished or not if it is rough how much rough it is all these things are really cater to the to the what do you call magnitude of limiting friction remember number 1 it depends upon the it depends upon this type of surface in contact okay so if the surface is smooth then obviously there is going to be less friction or less magnitude of limiting friction if the object is rough if the surfaces are rough then obviously the magnitude of uh, limiting friction is going to be very very high right and if the surface is polished then obviously again the value of maximum friction or limiting friction obtained is going to be very small secondly so that was about the quality of surface you can say okay so this first law is regarding the quality of surface second law this is also very important it acts tangentially to the surface let me just write that it it by it i mean what do i mean by it is the limiting friction okay limiting friction and by the way mathematically the representation is nothing but f s max we are going to be always talking about the value or the magnitude of limiting friction in all the four laws so the second law says or second rule says well it always acts tangential always remember this this is one of the prime one of the most important uh, properties of even friction it is always tangential to the surface so if you if you've got two surfaces like this okay this red color is sliding over this orange color then obviously this is the interface this is the interface this red color block since it is moving in this direction that is the right hand side direction it will experience a friction force tangential to this surface in this direction this direction this direction and opposite to that of motion and obviously this one is going to have if this is having friction in this direction this one is going to have friction in this direction right tit for tat <laughs> anyway third point third point is something which is related with not quality this one was related with the quality of area in contact and this is related to the quantity let me just talk about that um limiting friction is independent of the area in contact how much area is in contact whether the area is small or big does not matter limiting friction is independent of the area in contact of 
the area in contact and finally the fourth and the most important point which actually is the basis for the coefficient of friction concept is this that limiting friction it by it I mean to say limiting friction I need to refer limiting friction it is directly proportional to the normal proportional to the normal reaction okay I need to tell you a few more things it is directly proportional to the normal reaction now this is going to be the basis for our topic coefficient of friction let me just tell you that also very important stuff so it's it's something like this do watch this let's say we have a ground and then there is a block over here um, let's say that this block is having a weight w well obviously in the downward direction right so since this is applying a force of w in the ground on the earth the earth will also reply by applying an equal amount of force in the upper direction and this is what you call n n is nothing but a normal reaction and is nothing but a normal reaction and let me just write this as weight well by the way weight is in newtons mass is not in newtons it is always computed in kgs anyway what we try to do is we try to apply a force p p is nothing but the applied a double p i'm not writing the entire stuff applied force applied force okay and obviously there is going to be some resistance and that resistance is what this chapter is all about there is going to be some resistance to this motion motion is obviously going to happen in this direction towards the right hand side but it is not going to happen immediately initially there is going to be some resistance offered and that resistance by the way guys is this okay what is this friction what friction the maximum value of static friction let's say that the object is not moving what is this this is nothing but f s max okay so basically what we are basically talking about is the what do you call the coefficient of friction how does coefficient of friction come into the picture so now there are actually four forces acting okay so this is the applied force and this is the retaliating or reactive force that is the friction force that we are going to be interested in this is the weight acting in the downward direction this is the normal reaction now what the statement actually is saying is all these um, all these points all these rules have been made by making observations by making by by carrying out some certain amount of a certain experiments you can say the most important point is force of friction that is f s max is directly proportional to the normal reaction that is n if that is so once you remove this sign of proportionality it essentially has to be compensated with a constant and that constant by the way is nothing but a greek symbol mu mu for a static case s dot n remember this case remember this a very important definition okay so what is this this over here this is nothing but a constant of proportionality this is nothing but a constant of proportionality which is popularly known as popularly known as the coefficient coefficient of static friction okay so that is all about static friction now some of you guys might there might be a question popping up in your minds if this is static friction what the hell is a dynamic friction what the hell is a kinetic friction okay so that can also be defined let me just write this first of all um, as far as static friction is concerned let me let me simplify this mu s is static friction and it can be expressed as as a division of the limiting friction okay or the maximum value of static friction with respect to the normal reaction in okay this is how you can express the coefficient of static friction and you can obviously write the division uh, well static friction is nothing but a division of the the limiting friction with the normal reaction one more thing let me just check it out coefficient of static friction is defined as the ratio okay that's a more appropriate word it's the ratio of limiting friction to the normal reaction 
Now, one more way, if this is static friction, once the object it sets itself up into a state of steady motion, okay, you keep uh, kept on applying force, as long as the object does not move, it's a static state. But when the object starts moving, it's a case of motion. And there, this mu s has to be replaced by mu k. And let me just tell you, let me just tell you, in that case, this is going to be f k, which is going to be equal to nothing but mu k multiplied by n. So remember, if you are talking about coefficient of friction, it is of two types. One is coefficient of static friction and the other one is the coefficient of dynamic friction, which is represented by mu k. Mu k is nothing but this is going to be f k divided by n. And what is f k? As I showed you, let me just draw this somewhere. Let me draw it here. This was applied force P and this over here was the force of friction F S and sometimes it became F and K. So initially you kept on applying force, the object did not move but after reaching a certain value of applied force, the object just starts moving. And after that it is easier to keep the object moving. But this is constant. This over here is FK again and this over here as I told you is FS or the maximum value of static friction. There are basically different values of static friction you can say but what we need is the maximum value of static friction. Anyway, anyway, so that was all about the coefficient of friction. Another important word is rather another important uh, topic is the angle of friction. Okay, now let me just take you through as to what angle of friction is. <sighs> let's let's rub all of this. Let's say we've got a block this this is ground basically and we've got a block over here so the forces if you are applying some force p let's say over here this is applied force p always you'll see in my videos i have the applied force always i re represented by capital p well there is obviously going to be some friction force f let me just simply write this as small f now there is going to be some some uh, weight it is obviously going to have some weight and there is going to be some reaction in. Now what the hell is angle of friction? Can you see any angle that any force is making now? Right? So let me just take you through this. Let me make this body once again. Let me rather make the free body. Okay. So if you watch carefully, if you watch carefully, there are two forces acting. Let me use a red color. One force is over here, at the interface, at the interface, there are two forces acting. Okay, one this, other force is this one. What is the name of this force at the interface? The name of this force is the force of friction, isn't it? Let's just write that, force of friction, force of friction or the friction force, let's say, simply. friction well that is being represented by fs max in problems you always need to take this value fs max okay and by the way you know very well that fs max by definition is equal to mu s times of the normal reaction and this over here is nothing but the normal offered from the ground normal okay now the best thing is that these two forces are obviously going to have a resultant have a resultant and this resultant over here this <laughs> let me fill this up this is a resultant basically resultant of what resultant of fs max and normal n let's say this is equal to simply r so this this resultant over here is simply r now by definition the angle that this resultant the angle that this resultant of friction and normal make with the normal is what is known as theta remember the angle that the resultant of this and this make with the vertical make with the normal not vertical make with the normal is known as the resultant let me just write this coefficient of friction not coefficient but the angle of friction it is defined 
as the angle made by the resultant of made by the resultant of made by the resultant of of what of fs max and n with with n itself or with the normal let's say so this basically is a definition of the angle of friction okay i hope with the help of this entire demonstration you have now got the idea of exactly what angle of friction is okay now let's just talk about angle of repose again this is closely associated with angle of uh, friction angle of repose is angle of friction but for a particular case i'll tell you that so stay tuned let's rub all of this and let us not talk about angle of friction okay now there is something else which i need to tell you okay how can i forget this very important case <laughs> okay let's have this friction force let's let's make a force triangle so there are three forces and three forces uh, can make a triangle force triangle let me tell you what that is and uh, let's see red color friction okay what is this this is nothing but fs max i'll write them down then i'm going to pick this vector and i'm going to pick it up over to this side what is the name of this force the name of this force is nothing but the normal and by triangle law if two forces are set up in magnitude and direction or if two forces are shown in magnitude and direction by the two sides of a triangle then the third force third force shows you the resultant but taken in the opposite order so this two sort of make a clockwise order and then the third force will not be in the clockwise order but in the anti clockwise order and this is green color so obviously that's it yeah done in the opposite order so this is the result and this is how a force triangle has been made so let me let me just tell you this is nothing but the maximum value of static friction this is nothing but fs max as far as this is concerned this is nothing but the normal and what is this this is resultant r now if you watch carefully this theta can be placed over there also angle between resultant normal resultant and normal theta okay one more thing that you can do is you can actually write tan theta let me show you how much is tan theta tan theta is equal to what perpendicular this fs max over base if you see this is theta this is uh, this is opposite that is perpendicular this is base and this is going to be hypotenuse so tan theta is essentially equal to what this is going to be fs max over normal that is in and by definition you know very well that mu s from here you can work it out mu s is nothing but the ratio of the maximum value of static friction and the normal so fs upon n can essentially be replaced by this mu s now you know that tan theta there is a very special relationship between theta and friction and this is that relationship very important thing thank god <laughs> i have told you this okay so that's it remember this mu s is what tan of theta Th tan of coefficient of not coefficient tan of the angle of friction tangent of the angle of friction that is going to be your coefficient of friction so coefficient of friction is actually equal to the tangent of the angle of friction you can say that okay now let us focus our attention now on understanding is on understanding what exactly is the angle of repose here we go a very special angle <laughs> which can be obtained by doing an experiment Here we go. Let me just show you that. Uh, okay, just watch, just watch. So this is a plane, plane surface. Obviously, both of them are going to have some friction. This is also having some friction. Okay, no surface is perfectly smooth. You know that very well, right? There isn't a perfectly smooth surface in this entire universe. And then this surface is also not smooth. If you take a look at this molecular level. obviously there are going to be aberrations there is going to be some inconsistency i'm going to be keeping this over here okay so what is angle of repose do watch this demonstration to understand this what i'll try to do is i'll try to increase the inclination nothing happens nothing happens 
but but if i keep on increasing the angle a time will arrive when this object will just start sliding okay just watch keep on increasing keep on yeah fun it just fallen so this angle over here that this inclined plane makes with the horizontal is your angle of repose so if i were to define this let me define this rather angle of repose well guys i don't want to write this please note this down um angle of repose is the minimum angle that an inclined plane that an inclined plane makes with the horizontal the minimum angle that the inclined plane makes with the horizontal when a body placed on it just begins to slide it is the minimum angle again let me just show that and by the way this is my vacuum tablet so all the numericals based on friction have been weighed with the help of this tablet okay well if you want to check out all the numericals which i had solved well the description is given down below in the link down below the, the link is given down below in the description by the way anyway it's something like this if you keep on increasing angle okay at a certain angle this will just start sliding and that angle is what is referred to as the angle of repose basically angle of repose well we we represent it by phi i guess or alpha depends on what your thinking is okay and there is a special relationship for a particular case let me just tell that to you what it is something like this so we've got we've got a plane something like this okay and for a certain angle let's say for a certain angle phi an object over here just starts sliding down the plane obviously there are going to be forces acting on it what are they those forces first of all let us let us talk about those forces in particular and then we'll start one force obviously is going to be this force its own weight so how much is the weight weight let's say is represented by capital w okay now if i draw a normal to this surface if i can just draw a normal to this surface it's it's something like this then obviously the angle subtended over here is going to be equal to this angle made by the inclined plane so this is going to be phi now this w obviously is going to have two components one perpendicular to the plane while the other along the plane so so two watches it's something like this yeah and then one force along this direction isn't it there is going to be a normal force also normal to the surface n and obviously since since the motion is about to impend in this direction there is going to be some force of friction at the interface in this direction okay that is the force of friction i am going to be simply writing it as f small f and this is nothing but w cos phi and this is nothing but w sin phi and this is your normal force okay let's say that we i have just reached this angle phi so the object object is in a state of impending motion it is just about to slide what you can say is this summation of all the forces in the direction of x is equal to 0 and by the way this is going to be your new x and this is going to be your new y okay so that is uh, not a, this is rather y and this is rather x so let's take this as positive this is negative or you can do it in the opposite sense also you can take this as positive and this is negative what i'll try to do is if you try to apply this the force is acting along this direction one is w sin phi let me take this as negative and let me take this force as positive so obviously this is going to be equal to f minus w sin phi is equal to 0 let us take this as our equation number 1 and then the second equation is going to be like this summation of all the forces in the direction of y is equal to 0 so you have this normal and you have this w cos phi so this is obviously going to be n upwards take it as positive w cos phi downwards take it as negative minus w cos phi is equal to 0 so once you have these two equations you can you can actually simplify them this can further be simplified 
as force of friction you can also write this as fs max don't worry this is fs max fs max is equal to what w sin phi and you can also reframe this equation number 2 as n is equal to uh, w cos phi now when you divide these two equations when you divide these two equations what do you get you get fs upon n okay fs when you divide these two you get fs over n and this actually is equal to w and w will cancel or sin phi by cos phi is equal to tan phi and there you go this is something this ratio the ratio of the maximum value of static friction to the normal is what is known as mu mu is known as tan theta okay remember this okay so what you can essentially say is mu static is equal to tan phi for the limiting case when the object is just about to slide down the plane Again, another important conclusion okay so you can basically say that angle of friction is equal to the angle of repose when the object is just about to slide downwards right so that was all about uh, understanding the basics of friction understanding what exactly limiting friction is what is static friction what is kinetic friction then we got to know about the laws of friction uh, one it depends upon the uh, quality of surface whether it is smooth or not whether it is polished or not then secondly we, we, we another law which was very important is that the force of friction always acts at the surface interface and tangential to the surface and opposing the relative motion the third law was that of the based on the whether the area is small or huge uh, does not matter it is independent of the magnitude of area in contact and fourth very important law which which was obviously a basis for uh, for the for the concept of coefficient of friction that was limiting friction is actually directly proportional to the normal reaction okay and that is exactly how we reached this conclusion mu is equal to tan theta remember that and by the way theta is the angle of friction remember and phi is your angle of repose right keep on including increasing the angle of uh, angle of inclined plane a time will arrive when the object will just start sliding down the plane and for that angle or that angle basically is what is referred to as the angle of repose so this was all about learning the concepts of friction now let us take up a problem and let us try to implement all the concepts that we have learned till now let's see them so guys by now you know each and everything about friction you know what angle of friction is what are the different types of friction now let us try to apply all of that to compute the angle of alpha for which the motion will impede. now you can clearly see that there are two blocks block a and b well these two are having the same weights okay what we need to find is for what value of alpha the motion will impede. the motion will just start that means this block will start to move in the down in the downward direction and this block will start moving in the left hand side direction so for what angle of alpha all of these things happen that is something which we need to work out okay i've already made the free body diagram of uh, these two blocks so first of all let me explain them to you block b obviously the motion will impend in this direction friction towards the right friction always opposite to that of motion here the motion is right here right so there is this tension force tension along this cable or string obviously it is kept on this surface so its weight is going to act on this surface because of which the surface will retaliate with a normal force so weight downwards normal force upwards if you watch carefully just try to apply equations of equilibrium you've got this f is equal to t right is equal to left top is equal to bottom f is nothing but a product of co coefficient of static friction mu into n and mu n basically is equal to t so this is one equation with which we are going to work the second equation can be framed from this free body diagram if you watch carefully this block okay angle over here that is alpha so this is w w is having two components perpendicular to the plane w cos alpha along the plane w sin alpha so because of this w cos alpha there is going to be a normal okay perpendicular to the plane and obviously there is this string tension force and then there is motion will impend along this direction motion is supposed to take place in this direction friction opposite to that of motion that is going to be mu n so if i were to frame an equation well that can be done fairly easily it's it's something like this okay t plus mu n watch this very interesting 
T plus mu n is going to be equal to what? W sine alpha. Very easy, isn't it? What the other thing which you can do is n actually is equal to W cos alpha. So instead of writing this n, what you can replace it with is W cos alpha. So you can write this as T basically is equal to W sine alpha minus this mu n. So in place of n, you can write W cos alpha. Okay, so this is another value of T which you have got from, from considering the free body of this inclined uh, mass or weight. So you've got two values of T, W sine alpha minus mu W cos alpha and this mu n. Okay, and n by the way, n by the way, let me open this, n is equal to W. So T can be expressed as the product of mu W. So this is the main equation. What we'll try to do is, let's say this is equation 1 and this is equation 2. We are going to be equating them both. So W sin alpha minus mu W cos alpha. Let me just write this. W sin alpha minus mu W, mu W cos alpha is equal to mu W, simply, simply. So W will cancel out from all these stuff. And what shall remain is this sin alpha is actually equal to mu mu plus mu cos alpha that means 1 plus cos alpha so what we need to calculate is the value of alpha how can that be done so let me take mu is equal to sin alpha over 1 plus cos alpha so this basically can be formulated as the formula of sin 2 theta is 2 sin theta cos theta so sin uh, alpha can be written as 2 sin alpha by 2 cos alpha by 2 yes you can do that divided by 1 plus cos square alpha cos alpha is nothing but 2 cos square alpha by 2 so this is going to cancel out sin alpha by 2 by cos alpha by 2 will be tan alpha by 2 so mu is essentially equal to tan alpha by 2 so this also cancels out we already know the value of mu the value of mu has to be taken as let me see this has been given to us i have not written it down mu's value already been given mu's value has to be taken as 0 0.2 this has been given to us in the problem you just need to put that value of 0 0.2 over there and once you do that you're going to get the value of alpha by 2 and this is by the way 0 0.2 is equal to tan alpha by 2 okay <coughs> so alpha by 2 is going to be equal to tan inverse 0 0.2 or you can also say alpha is equal to 2 times of tan inverse 0 0.2 so that is your answer for this value of alpha the motion shall impend this block will just start to move down the plane this block will just start to move left off of its original position okay so i'm going to be only taking up this problem i'm pretty much sure by 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 doing this problem you can solve all the problems and their links can be found in the description down below there is a big playlist for friction and also uh, one single playlist for engineering mechanics covering all the topics which have been uploaded till date so guys that was all for today i'll see you again in the next video until then take care have a nice day keep learning keep watching thank you